The, the hardest thing with somebody who's new is to get them to understand what painting is. Usually, people have a concept about painting, which is either I want to I want to live the artist's life because it's romanticized in some way, a Gully Jimson or something. However, however they wrote, they look at it. Uh, or they went to France and they just loved all of these artists living on the houseboats and, and so on. Or they um, have been a hobby painter for a long time and figure they should get a little bit more. And they can paint flowers or they can paint a pretty good re rendition of someone's portrait or, or they can kind of copy a, a photograph. The problem is that most of the people starting, or a lot of people starting, uh, have been educated by the camera. And so they think that, gee, it looks just like a photograph as a compliment. So these people haven't really addressed what painting is. And so the hardest thing with someone new is um, getting them into the painting in a way where uh, where they can approach what painting is and have kind of their own eureka moments. Now, at first, the good news is that they have to learn to control the materials. They have to learn, you know, what does a brush do? What, 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 ha what, kind, what are the different kinds of brushes? And, and uh, um, what kind of marks do they make? And when do you use this one? When do you use this one? Well, the truth is there's a lot of data there's a lot of things you, you, that are, it's not art, it's just information that you need in order to make art. And um, I'm one of those people that believe that the artist is in a person and when it's time for it to come out, then it's when they get some instruction. And then the job of the instructor is to try and help them get that out. Now when they do, they come to you and they have no concept really of what art is, um, except whatever a museum director has told them on one of those tapes. But they, um, they often say they, they don't know what it is, but they know when they see it. And, and the truth is that's good in the beginning because they will learn to use those different brushes and how to make those marks and how to mix color and, you know, mixing blue and yellow and you get a green. Well, if you mix black and yellow, you also get a green. And there's, you know, there's, you mix romber and yellow, you also get a green, you know, and it's like lots of, lots of just little things to learn. And that's good because it keeps your mind busy with real things while the artist in you struggles to get out. And it eventually always gets out. I, I've never seen a case where it's not. And the thing that's nice about um, taking classes is that, in, as opposed to being self-taught, is that when you, when you take a class, you've got someone who is telling you what has been found out over the last several hundred years. You don't have to rediscover all those things for yourself. It's always been said that, that new artists do their work in advance by being on the shoulders of the artists that came before. I heard it in another way. My art mother used to, used to call it, uh, she's the woman who encouraged me, leave corporations, leave all that money, and just go be an artist, you know. And um, uh, she used to say that artists go with the permission of the artists that came before them. And what that means is you're looking at who came before, you look at what they did. Um, you looked at how they do it. Some of the greatest teachers are in the museums. You know, you need to learn how to use the materials, but then it, you also go to museums and look at masterwork, even in a book, and you learn about composition and color and edges and, you know, there's all these things to look at. And the trick there is just to know the right questions to ask yourself when you're looking at a piece of work. So it's all of that. Uh, so a person coming into the art center, the first thing that they have to do is get the proper materials and not the junk materials. That's another thing. 
people you know, say, well, I'm a student, I'll get student grade. Uh, I don't think so. They don't really want to do that. Because what you wind up doing is fighting your materials. You know, uh, uh, a sculptor wouldn't go and get uh, um, a cheap chisel. You'd be sharpening it every 10 minutes. You know, so what, why would you do that to yourself? Or it'll get dull and you try to use it and you knock off a piece that's this big than this instead of this big. Or, or you get some paint that is artist grade paint and you keep trying to mix it and every time you mix it with another color, the, the color goes flat. You're saying, how come it's happening to me? It's because the paint's no good. <laughs> it's not good. So you really got to learn what is good and why a paint is good. Why is a brush good? What kind of medium do you use? There's just a lot of information that people need to do it uh, properly. And, and watching, uh, you know, people have a lot of fun with, with uh, television painters. He says, OK, now dip it in this and go like this. That's, that, that's painting for the masses. <laughs> Someone who's looking to become a painter um, really become, to, to develop their inner artist really needs to be a lot more serious about it and have to do a little struggling with it. In other words, you have to have that period of confusion where you <laughs> it's not that any of it is so hard. It isn't. Um, there are a lot more difficult things in life to learn, like the theory of relativity and understand what it means. You don't have to do that. There's a lot of things. Each one yields to analysis. But you have to deal with so many of them at the same time that it makes it confusing. And that's why a guide is, is good. And that's what makes doing it on your own or just learning how to make a happy tree doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work too well. Because that's all you can do. I had, 